Today, let's talk about fiber. Specifically, we're going to talk about what is the structure of fiber? What are the things that define whether something can be considered fiber or not? What are the different types of fiber? And what are the different properties that a different fiber might have? We're then going to apply the different properties of different fibers to understand different physiological effects they might have in humans. The daily recommended intake for fiber is 36 grams per day for a man and 25 grams per day for a woman. However, the vast majority of people in America do not come close to meeting these adequate intakes and are deficient based on this recommendation in the amount of fiber that they have. If you look at the nutrition facts label on the right, you'll see that fiber is located under total carbohydrates, even though they have very little energy content. Fiber is shown here as dietary fiber and may be further broken down into soluble or insoluble fiber, but that's at the discretion of the food manufacturer. The general recommendation is to eat a large variety of different sources of fiber because we want to get a variety of different soluble and insoluble fibers. The reason for this is that each individual fiber chemicals molecule has a different effect, so we want to eat a variety of them to get the most possible beneficial effects. The structure of a fiber is a polysaccharide. Importantly, it's a polysaccharide that is resistant to the digestive enzymes in the human body. They might be a homopolysaccharide, for example, a long chain of polyfructose, or could be a heteropolysaccharide containing of different monomeric subunits. They could contain monosaccharides, such as fructose, glucose, or galactose, but also could contain sugar acids or amino sugars or sugar alcohols. Glucosamine, shown here on the right, is an amino sugar. It's defined as such because there's an amino group, the NH2 group, attached to what is normally a monosaccharide. This diagram shows a large variety of dietary carbohydrates. There are hundreds of different potential dietary carbohydrate structures that we might consume. However, there's only a small number that we're able to digest and absorb. For example, most people can digest sucrose and starch, including isomaltose and maltose. Some people can digest lactose, but then everything else not shown in a red box almost every human is not able to digest. That means of the large variety of potential dietary carbohydrates we consume, there's only a very small number are actual dietary carbohydrates in terms of us being able to absorb them for energy. The rest of them, since they're not absorbed, end up in our large intestine and could serve as fiber. But what defines a fiber? Well, there's a few different definitions we can talk about. First, let's talk about functionality. A dietary fiber is a non-digestible carbohydrate that is found intact in plants. A functional fiber, on the other hand, is still a non-digestible carbohydrate. It might have been isolated from plants or synthesized under laboratory conditions, but it must display a physiological benefit to human health. That's what distinguishes a functional fiber from a dietary fiber, the benefit to human health. The United States Department of Agriculture has this definition for fiber. You'll notice it uses the same paradigm. It includes naturally occurring fibers that are intrinsic and intact in plants and isolated or synthetic soluble or insoluble carbohydrates that the FDA has determined to have a beneficial effect. You'll notice that's the combination of a dietary fiber and a functional fiber. This definition recently changed under some controversy because this now means that synthetic fibers, as long as they've been shown to have some physiological benefit, can be shown on a nutrition facts label as a fiber. This includes things like cellulose, pectin, or psyllium husk. This could be provided within a food or even as a separate supplement. The key factor is it has to be non-digestible and has to have some demonstrable benefit to human health for it to be considered a fiber. Some common functional fibers include things like polydextrose or soluble corn fiber, dextrins, or psyllium husk. As you'll look for the supplement facts label for Benafiber, you can see that it lists three grams of dietary fiber, 12%. That's a functional fiber that has been added to this supplement. So how do we characterize what a fiber is? Well, the first and most important property is whether or not that fiber is soluble in water. Let's start with insoluble fiber. They are generally not fermentable, do not promote viscosity, and are non-absorbent. They are generally there to provide bulk in stool and pass through our gastrointestinal tract largely unchanged, including through our gut microbiota. Soluble fibers, on the other hand, could be fermentable, could be viscous, or could be adsorbent. By adsorbent, what I mean is other chemicals may attach and adhere to the surface of that particular molecule, for example, cholesterol or glucose. You'll notice for soluble fiber, for each of these, I said it could be fermentable, or it could be viscous, or it could be adsorbent. That depends on the actual chemical structure of the particular soluble fiber. Different soluble fibers vary in their level of fermentability, viscosity, and adsorbance. Let's go through one example. Shown on the right is something called the Bristol stool chart. 
This is a very commonly used diagnostic technique to assess somebody's stool. Most people have stool that are either type 3 or type 4. So let's imagine a patient has started a zero carbohydrate diet. So not only are they eating no carbohydrates, so no starchy foods, but also no fiber. They then report that they now have type 1 stool, that is stool that are separate hard lumps, kind of like nuts. They also report that they have very little flatulence. Pause the video and I want you to consider why would this happen and what kind of fiber would you recommend and why? They would have very little flatulence because they would have very little fermentable fiber. The fermentable fiber serves as a prebiotic for a gut bacteria. That gut bacteria generally will then produce gases, which results in flatulence. So what kind of fiber would you recommend? Well, in that case, you might recommend a soluble fermentable fiber. You also might recommend some level of an insoluble fiber to provide more bulk to the stool. Fiber has important roles in both disease prevention and disease management. Studies have shown that fiber can have hypoglycemic and hypolipidemic effects. It can alleviate constipation. It may be beneficial for weight management and could even have effects on our central nervous system. The type of fiber also can affect our immune system by modifying our gut microbiota. So the fibers that have the most beneficial effects on cholesterol control tend to have the properties of being soluble, cholesterol absorbent, and non-fermentable. This includes fibers such as psyllium husk. Again, I want you to pause the video and take a minute and think, why would adsorbance, non-fermentability, and solubility matter for cholesterol control? An absorbent fiber is able to bind both cholesterol and bile acids. That sequesters them and prevents them from being reabsorbed into our bodies. However, it's beneficial that this fiber is also non-fermentable. If the fiber was broken down by our gut bacteria, that would then release the cholesterol and bile acids and allow them to be reabsorbed. This means that having a fiber that is particularly absorbent of cholesterol, but generally non-fermentable, will more likely allow us to excrete the cholesterol in our feces. In summary, fiber is an important part of human health, but most people do not meet the recommended daily intake for fiber. Fiber occurs naturally in plants, but can also be added as a functional fiber to certain foods. The specific properties of a particular type of fiber dictate the physiological effects it will have. There's not just one type of fiber. There's many different types of fibers, and they vary based on their solubility, fermentability, and the particular chemicals they may have the ability to absorb to their surfaces. These properties will dictate its specific effects on human health. Broadly, fiber has been found to decrease the risk of heart disease, reduce blood lipids, help control diabetes, and help in weight management. Fibers are a very diverse set of chemicals. They have different structures and different properties. And it's important to not just think of fiber as one thing, but think more deeply about how different fibers can have different effects on our bodies.